Okay, I have the Ellie Explorer 4K action cam here to review. Now, first off, I'm going to list the specs to you and what it's capable of. Then I'm going to tell you about what comes included in the box, and there is a lot of stuff. It's really, really full of accessories. Then I'm going to show you the camera, I'm going to show you all around the camera. I'm going to show you it turned on and its menus. Then I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to show you the Android and iOS app that is completely free that you download on your phone to pair with this to, uh, and then you completely do everything from the phone. So if you don't like navigating the menus on the actual device, you can actually do it from your phone. You can do all the setting up and syncing from there. Or another use for that is if you need to have a camera a bit of away from you and stand away from it to do something, you can actually remotely sort of control it using the app as well. It's really good. It uses Wi-Fi. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you the specs, show you what's included in the box, show you the menu, show you the app. Then I'll give you my opinion on it at the end. You'll also see just a very basic clip to show you the quality that the camera can film. It won't be anything particularly spectacular. I won't be out mountain bike riding or whatever it'll just be a basic clip around say a nearby park or whatever just walking around just to show you the quality of the actual picture and sound okay so here we go it is waterproof up to 30 meters but not just it itself you have to have this case that's on it at the moment on this is the waterproof shell the waterproof case and back it does have a regular case and a different sort of back to it which isn't waterproof so make sure you put you actually have the right one on if you put this underwater otherwise you have problems so the case it comes included it's a waterproof case comes included with it in fact it's actually on it already when you first open it up and you can have up to 30 meters now, if you want better sound quality, there is a different back included in the box with, with some like slits, some sort of holes to let in more sound. But make sure you put the right one on before you put this in actual water. Now, the other one will actually still make it kind of rainproof. So if you want good sound quality, but you might get a little bit of rain on it, don't worry. The other case should also be fine. But don't use the other case for underwater. It has a wide angle, nice wide angle view of 170 degrees. It has a, its focus is capable of doing from 12 centimeters to infinity, which is pretty good. It has a built in speaker and microphone. It can support micro SD cards, it has a micro SD card slot for saving files to of up to 64 gigabytes. Now, on the back of the box, there is a misprint. It says only up to 32 gigabytes, but actually, it does support SDs up to 64 gigabytes. And I have used a 64 gigabyte card in it. So it definitely works 64 gig cards. On the back, there is a screen so you can see what you're doing. You don't have to just use the remote app. You can actually look at what's going on on the back or uh, preview videos you recorded. It's not a huge screen because it is a small device, but it's a two inch screen. It is a two inch LTPS LCD screen. And it has a replaceable and rechargeable 1500 milliamp an hour battery. Now that is another misprint on the box. The actual box makes this look worse than it actually is, to be honest. It looks like it only supports 32 gig cards or support at least 60 gig, uh, 64 gig cards. And on, on the back of the box, it says that the rechargeable battery that's in it is 900, but actually it's 1,500 milliamp an hour. So it's a bigger battery than it actually says on the box. So it is a better battery. And that, if for some reason that battery fails, unlike some devices, if that battery fails, you can pop it out and uh, try to find a replacement online, maybe even contact the manufacturers, whatever. If something happens to that battery, you don't have to replace the whole unit. You can pop the battery out from the bottom of the device. And this is quite good at this price range. It costs around about £60 or about $65 in the US. And it is actually 4K. It's not broadcast 4k but it is ultra hd 4k it's ultra hd uh, a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and it is 24 frames a second it's 24 fps 24 frames a second which is unbelievable at this price range now if that sort of frames per second isn't quite enough you can do 2k at 2560 by 1440 resolution at 30 frames a second which should be usable if you're recording something super fast like 
a race car or something like that, it might not really be enough. But for most uses, that should be enough. So if you want a really good action cam that's really capable at an affordable price and you perhaps don't think the 4K is high enough because of the frames per second, you can still do 2K at a decent frames per second, which is better still, you, it's better than getting just a regular 1080p HD camera because you can go that step up even if you're not using the 4K. And as for 1080p, it does also support that. So if you don't want to use 4K and you don't want to use 2K, you can always use full HD 1080p at 60 frames a second, which definitely should be enough. So it's at least 60 frames a second on 1080p, even if you don't want to use the other couple higher resolutions. Or if you really want to get as many frames a second out of it as you can, there is 720p HD at 120 frames a second, or you can select 60 frames a second for 10, uh, 720 as well. As I've mentioned, it does have Wi-Fi built into it, so you can communicate with your smartphone, and you can transfer files wirelessly from the SD card on the device to your phone if you want using the app. It has a single shot mode, timer mode or continuous mode. This can also be used as a webcam which is quite handy so you can actually have here a nice little 2k or even 4k webcam though chances are you won't be broadcasting or whatever in a full 4k resolution because of bandwidth but still you have a nice little webcam here that's capable of doing 720 1080 2k or 4k resolution. Now at this stage, I found that that doesn't seem to work on Mac. I have plugged this into a MacBook Pro and selected on the device webcam mode, and I can't seem to get it to pick up. But at least you can use it as a webcam on Windows, and maybe they, they will bring out a driver for Mac eventually anyway. But at this stage, it doesn't seem to work as a webcam on Mac, just on Windows. Now, you can put this, uh, plug this into a Mac or Windows XP or higher and use it to transfer data. In the box, you get quite a lot. You get loads of accessories. There's a little accessory box there. I'm not going to really give you a lot of detail about it or show you all being used, all that, because that would be too much of a tutorial. This is a review. But just know that it comes with lots of accessories, such as a 3M adhesive tape, cleaning cloth, which is a real good bonus. I didn't have to include that, but there is a cleaning cloth, so you can wipe off the lens or whatever if you need to. It also has bandages or straps which is basically straps to strap it on your chest if you want to there is even a bicycle mount to mount it to a bicycle for say mountain biking whatever you might be doing there's another accessory seat there's a steel rope or steel cable there's a ribbon there's a fixing base there's a helmet attachment so you can attach this to a helmet there's another adapter, an adapter seat, and a user manual, and a USB charging cable and transfer cable. It costs $59.99 in the UK, so about £60, or $65.89 in the US, so about $56, uh, $66 in the US. This is the black model. You might be able to tell even from this distance shot, but it comes in various colours, and this is the black model. There's like blue, gold, all sorts of colours. Now, it might depend upon the seller. The seller that sent me this to review, I believe, only currently sells, at least in the UK, with black, but there are other colors of the Ellie Explorer. There is also a Pro model available called the Ellie Explorer Pro, which I won't give you all the specs for that here because this is not a review for the Pro, but know that there is a slightly more expensive Pro model that I believe costs around about 90, 80 or 90 pounds, I think about 90 pounds in the UK, I'm not sure about dollars, and it has like a higher amount of frame rates on the 4K and it has slightly different um, hardware such as sensor inside, I think it uses a Sony sensor, things like that. So just know that there is this one, the Ellie Explorer Action Cam, and there's also the Ellie Explorer Pro 4K Action Cam. 
it does come in a very nice box i'm not going to show you the, all the box too detailed because it's not really about the box but just know it comes a nice box with this bit here there's a little bit of a ribbon on the side and it like pull you just pull this lower bit here off the smaller bit and then pull that off and it is quite nice quite a good packaging and isn't really too cheap packaging it isn't some horrible brown packaging like a lot of cheaper things come with very nicely packed like i really like the box actually so the box opens like this. And then inside there's two compartments. Here is a compartment stuffed full of accessories. Then there is a compartment which would have the camera in if I had it in, but I've taken it out of course. I think instead of having this actually on the table it might be probably easier if I have it in my hands like this. Now, as you can see, it comes with this shell, this plastic shell on, which is a waterproof case. And like I said, there is another back now let's turn it over now as you can see this back is closed up here and it's see-through so of course you can see the screen but the other one has slits here to let out sound let sound in now you have buttons here which is basically pretty much up and down button then there's a select button on top and on the front there's a power button which you hold in for a few seconds to boot it up you see it already comes with a mount on that case as well it actually does stand up pretty well on a table using that as well now here there is a little now here is a little latch that you have to pull then lift this up like that and then that comes down and then you can get to the camera inside let's do that actually let's take it out now here it is outside of its waterproof casing, just the camera itself. Now obviously outside of that case is no longer waterproof at all, okay? But now we can get to the port, such as SD card slot to put in a card or the uh, or the USB cable to charge it or transfer data. There is also a small micro HDMI to plug into your TV as well there. So you have a card slot, a small USB slot, and a small HDMI slot there as well. Now on the bottom, you push this lever here, which will release this little box bit here, this little flap. That comes right off, and you can take out the battery, put it back in if you want. Now you don't have to take out the battery to charge it. You leave it in, you just plug in the USB cable, so don't worry. You don't have to keep taking it out or anything like that to charge it. Now here is the up and down buttons actually on it. You might not be able to see that on the small screen. Uh, on the screen because I'm using a small screen. I'm not sure if how well you can see it, but there is little up and down buttons there. Now if we turn it over to the top, there is the OK button, and then there is a LED indicator light there as well. Plus, once you turn it on, you'll see here there's an LED uh, light there that flashes as it's doing stuff. Let's turn it on now. To turn it on. There is a power button on the front. There's the lens, of course, there. So let's hold the button in for a few seconds. Now there it is on, and it's in the video recording mode by default, and it says the resolution up the top. It says if there's a SD card in, or TF as it calls it. Now, as you can see, I haven't got a card in at the moment, so it's greyed out. Then if I had Wi-Fi turned on, there would be a Wi-Fi signal indicator there. Then a battery indicator to show how full the battery is. Then time and date information down here. Now every so often the screen will go off to save battery, but we can just hit OK and bring the screen back on. There's a blue light there to show that there's power. Now, if we hold down the top button here, it will just have a little screen. I'm not going to do it because it will show the password of my of the Wi-Fi. But basically, it'll have a Wi-Fi symbol here, and it'll be ready to pair on your phone. Now, to do that on your phone, you don't kind of connect it to your actual Wi-Fi, to your main network. You actually go to Wi-Fi settings, and you know how you select a actual network like so and so's wi-fi network or wi-fi one or whatever well with this with this button held down and it and the screen showing a wi-fi symbol when you go to select a wi-fi on your device such as your smartphone it will list as a device and you can connect to it and it will ask for a password now by default the password is one two three four five six seven eight 
but you can change it from the app on your phone and I've done that that's why I'm not going to show it to show what the password is but it's very straightforward I'll show you once I've actually on the phone now if we press OK that will start recording but I haven't got a card in so it's moaning now if we press the power button on the front it will change over to uh, still photography mode to take pictures it will take JPEGs as well as video and it says 16 million of them will change the uh, quality then 720p mode at 120 frames per second we can change that as well so basically that was slow motion mode which is why it had a running man now this is where you could play back any videos you've taken but I haven't got a card in then to options and then we can scroll uh, hit OK on top and we can scroll we can select a resolution so we can select do we want it at 4k 2.7k which is basically 2k do we want 720 at 30 frames, 720 at 60 frames, 720p at 120 frames, 1080p at 30 frames, or 1080p at 60 frames? So you get quite a lot of options there to select. Now I tend to just leave it on 4K. And that's pretty much a basic, quick basic look. Just know once you've got a card in, you can hit the OK button on top to stop and start recording. You can also set up most of those options I showed you from the phone app. You don't have to do it on here. Now to turn it off when we've finished, we hold down the button on the very front near the lens. Just hold it down for a few seconds and it will go off. I'd just like to show you how small it is. Very, very small and compact. Let me actually just completely hold it in my hand here. Very, very, very small. I'll give you the dimensions later. In fact, I'll give you the dimensions now if you like. It is at 29.8 by 59.2 by 41 millimeters. It is very, very small and very small if you hold it in the palm of your hand. Now to put it back in, what we do, make sure it's the right way up. Push them in like that. We then raise the back plate here. push him down. Now once we have him pushed down, make sure he's closed, you raise this over the lip of the case and push it down on top, push the top bit down there and it will snap firmly closed to make sure it's nice and waterproof, firmly closed now. Okay, I'm not sure where you can see us. It's a bit hard for me to tell on a little three inch screen on my camera. So hopefully you can see the display well enough. This is the app. You can get it from the Google Play Store or the App Store on iOS. It's called Ellie Cam. And you get a preview of what the camera is seeing. At the moment it's not really looking at much. So, but you get a preview up here. You can record video from here, take a photo or take some uh, slow-mo footage. But you can change the mode from here from normal to loop video or time-lapse. So you can record time-lapse there. At the moment we're in the tab down the bottom called shoot but we can change it to media gallery. A media gallery shows what's on this phone so if we've transferred files from the card on the SD card on the device to this phone it would show here and there isn't any in this app at the moment. And then there's another tab at the top which shows what files are stored on the card on the actual uh, camera itself. We can switch it up here. Then we have settings. Now this is where you can set up various things like you can actually f on the device itself. But we can do it from this app instead to so just change the video resolution. So we can change it from 4K to 720p 30 frames or 120 frames or whatever. So you just select that then you get your choice here such as 4k stuff like that so that's hit 4k then we can close it then we can put loop mode on if we want it and time lapse mode if we want it there or time lapse photography for because well, basically this time lapse in the middle there is for setting time lapse video then there's a photography still photography time lapse mode there as well we can turn sound recording on or off for photos we have some other options such as the quality there, the resolution to 16M, whatever, timed, auto, drama shot, we can turn on from there. Other camera properties here we have such as exposure, compensation, EV, 
white balance auto or change it to one you want as daylight image rotation light source frequencies such as 50 hertz 60 hertz have turned the led indicator light on or off wi-fi on or off uh, time synchronization which i think is a really cool feature you can do that and instead of having to set up the time and date on the device it will get the time and date from your phone which is really really good you can set up a watermark on your videos if you want that from there as well you can format the device sd card on the camera if you want or not uh, set reset the factory default or look at the space how much space you got left on the SD card although I haven't got one in right now so you can't see and then exit the program from there so it's all pretty straightforward but it's a really really good app really good way to not just take video and photos remotely but it's also a good way to actually change the settings on your device and check uh, the memory space the storage on your device or even format it and reset it from there so it's a really really good little app Okay, so what do I think of it? I think it's absolutely brilliant at the price range. Sure, I'm sure if you pay a lot more money, you can get maybe in 4K ones with 120 frames a second at 4K. I don't know, but the point is you're getting a really good 4K action camera that comes with a bunch of accessories, which if you bought, say, a GoPro, you'd have to buy all those accessories separate. So not only when you get a more expensive camera, such as GoPro, are you having to pay more for the camera itself, you're then having to, if you need accessories, you're having to pay a lot more on top for the accessories. This comes with the tons of accessories and mounts and clips, and it has 4K Ultra HD resolution, even if it isn't the highest frames per second you can get, or at around about £60, around about $65 in the US, as opposed to, say, two, dollars $300 or two, £300. So at the price range, it's amazing. It's good quality. It has tons of accessories, good resolutions, all for an affordable but more budget sort of price for an action cam. So it's actually very, very impressive. I do re actually recommend it. It's an amazing piece of kit for the price range that it's at. Absolutely amazing. Really good. So thanks for watching. Please like and comment on this video. And if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as it will just take a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Also, if you're watching this as a review on the Amazon product page, if you could hit the useful or helpful button, that will help me out a lot too. Thanks for watching.